Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone, thank you so much for being here, but I'd like to introduce you to Bob Davis. Oh, yeah. Has, right on. Who did a wonderful job um, defending the both of us. <laughs> I can't say anything more. Here you go, Bob. Fuck.
that was already uh, rolling out of uh, L.A. Uh, in a Black Panther case about illegal wiretaps or warrantless wiretaps. But that was post-conviction, and therefore it was going to slow track. It went fast. We got uh, we got the Cincinnati and Six Circuit Court of Appeals very rapidly. I wrote half the brief in Detroit, and uh, Arthur Kamoy, who was famous for being dragged out of the HUAC hearings in uh, the early 50s in uh, Washington, uh, wrote uh, half of the brief at the uh, Center for Constitutional Rights in New York, and uh, we got a fast hearing, and we won a 2-1 decision outlawing warrantless political surveillance uh, and wiretap to the Supreme Court. And when we got to the Supreme Court, uh, it was, <laughs> by that time, Arthur Canoy had been brought on as chief counsel, and uh, he was a uh, professor of law at Rutgers uh, Law School, uh, a great progressive, one of the founders of the National Lawyers Guild in 1937, back when the American Bar Association would not allow Irish Jews or Negroes to uh, become members of the ABA. And uh, therefore, we got there, and we got there pretty fast, and uh, Rick was, uh, you know, was by that time known as Supreme Court. He had to disqualify himself because he had been a part of the formula program. So we had eight justices that were uh, listening to the case. And um, Kenoy arguing the case for us. John Sinclair, who's back there. I'm sorry, John Sinclair, who's back there. Um, because he was one of the plaintiffs, there's a throne like two seats raised pedestal in the back of the Supreme Court chambers, and he and Lenny were sitting there in their purple white paint <laughs> during the argument. And Kanoi went down the went down the uh, uh, row of the Supreme Court justices and said, "You, Justice So and So, you said such and such and such and such a case, and you, Justice So and So, you said such and such and such a case." And finally, one of the conservative Supreme Court justices said, "Well, and." Robert Mardian, the first guy gone in Watergate, was arguing the case for the Justice Department. And he said, if you would just listen to these things, you would understand how dangerous this is. And I offered to you to listen to it in chambers. Keith had gotten Bill Gossett of Dykema Gossett, the biggest law firm in Michigan, to represent him because it was a mandamus against him. And um, that's when one of the uh, Supreme Court justices said, listen, if we listen to it in chambers, will you allow the attorneys for the defendants to listen to it in chambers? And uh, Marty and son, we would let Mr. Gossett, but not Mr. Kenoy. <laughs> Thurgood Marshall turned his chair around because he had argued Brown versus Board of Education with Kenoy in the Supreme Court. And he never looked at the government again during the trial. Anyway, wow. how he joined the argument. When the decision came down, it was on a Monday, Lindquist, who had to recuse himself, 
must have tipped off the Justice Department that they were going to lose on Monday. And the Friday night before, the decision on Monday was when the Watergate went down the court. Yeah. And that was when the boys said they were putting them in. They were taking them out of the Democratic National Committee headquarters. Anyway, every single anti-war Black Panther got dismissed. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for being such a wonderful of the people. Yeah, we love you. I'd like to say this. Ken Borland's right over there. He got me out of two to ten years in jail in Marquette, Michigan in 1970. I've been in that Marquette jail. Enough of that. Jeannie?